Hi guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn about a very important concept called concurrency. Now, uh, this is actually a very broad topic, so I'm going to try as much as possible to keep it short and simple. Okay? So anyways, we could think of concurrency as the ability to execute multiple tasks at the same time. Now, we could actually execute code synchronously or asynchronously. And I'm going to give an example that explains both of these concepts very simply. Now let's take for instance that we have a student that wants to use a restroom. Okay? And now we have another student that wants to also use the restroom. Now guess what? There's one more student that wants to use a restroom. Okay? Now what happens is I as a teacher, I give student A a hall pass. And student A goes to use a restroom for like 30 minutes and then comes back. When he's done, he passes the hall pass to the second student who now goes to the restroom, comes back, and then student B passes the hall pass to student C who now goes to the restroom and then comes back. Okay? Now this is known as synchronous programming or synchronous execution. So what happens is code is executed one at a time so the next code cannot execute until the first one is done okay that's basically what that is let's look at a different scenario let's say this time around we have two more destinations okay and this time person a needs to go clean the bathroom person b needs to go to school for a lecture while student c needs to go to the library to borrow a book okay now, remember from our synchronous programming, what happens is that person A can go clean the bathroom, but person B cannot go to school until A comes back, right? And now, when A comes back, B can go to school, go for the lecture, and then come back before C can now go to the library and then come back. And I can see that a lot of time has been wasted because Person A could have gone to clean the bathroom while person B went to school while person C went to the library. Now this is where asynchronous programming comes in. Now for asynchronous programming, all of them go pretty much at the same time and whenever any of them is done, they return. Now for this example, let's imagine that person C finished from the library first and then person A finished cleaning the bathroom before um, person B finished her lecture. Now what's going to happen is first C is going to go and then A and then B. So you can see that this way all of them went out to perform their tasks. Whenever they were done they just returned back home and everything went on smoothly. Alright? Now we're going to see how to implement this in our code. So let's head over to our storyboard and implement a very quick design so we're going to drag two buttons to the screen like this, alt drag like that. And I'm going to call this green and this guy red. Now let's create an outlet to our view controller. So green like this down here, green pressed. And uh, finally, let's get the red button and say red pressed. Cool. Let's head back. Make some room. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to update the background color of the view. So, view.backgroundcolor is going to be dot green. I'm going to do the same thing here, and this is going to be dot red. Now, let's see what we have. So green, red. Awesome, it works properly. Now whenever you run the app, what actually happens is all of our UI is executed in the main thread. Now let's say, for example, whenever we click on the green button, something happens, right? Maybe we make a network request that takes like, uh, let's say, five seconds to execute. And then when it's done, we now update the view, right? Let's run this and see what happens.
So if we click on the green button, you can see that the app actually froze, right? And it, did, it doesn't execute anything until it's done. Now this is not a good thing. What happened here is, when we ran the program, at this point, we blocked our main thread. And since we blocked our main thread, none of these guys can execute until this guy comes back. Now there's a way we can handle this, and that is simply by implementing concurrency to our program. Luckily, we have an API here called GCD, and in full, Grand Central Dispatch. Now what this does is it allows us to be able to manage concurrency throughout our application. So in order to make sure that the main queue is not blocked, what we need to do is create um, a queue and then execute this code within that queue. Now to create a queue, we're going to use the dispatch queue and say let queue be equal to dispatch queue like this. And we're going to pass in a label. Now you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to say download image. And next, we can say q.async, right? And then we just simply move this guy into this block and reference self like this. Now, if we run this code, let's see what we have. So if we click on the green, you can see that the app didn't actually freeze. Click on red, it executed. And after five seconds, something happens. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that UI is executed in the main thread. And you can see here it says, must be used from the main thread. Now, at this point, we're actually on a different queue, right? So how do we jump back to the main queue? It's very easy. What we need to do is say, dispatch queue.main.async and simply move this guy in here like that. Awesome. Now if we run this again, we should not have any problem. So I click on the green, nothing happens. I click on red, red is executed. After five seconds, green is executed. There is no warning or whatever. Now just a quick recap, what is happening here is whenever the button is clicked, right? We create a queue and then we execute this block of code inside of that queue, meaning that we are breaking out of the main thread. And by doing that, the main thread is able to continue executing other blocks of code. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, another thing I'd like to demonstrate here is this idea of synchronous and asynchronous methods, right? So now let's head over to the view to load. And I want us to do something over here. We're going to create a queue. I'm going to call this queue one. And this is going to be equal to dispatch queue. And uh, we could just call this first. And now I'm going to say queue one dot sync. And I'm going to add a print statement here. This is the first queue. And right here, I want to sleep for, um, well, let's say five seconds as well. Awesome. Now, right here, I want us to create a second queue. And, uh, well, I'm so lazy. Let's just copy this. Paste to, forgive me, guys, second second and let's make this two seconds and right here I'm just gonna say all have been executed now let's run this and see what happens So as you probably guessed, the first thing that happened, let's move this here, is the first queue was executed, right? This is the first queue right here. Then the second queue was executed. Then finally, all have been executed. Now let's run this again, but this time around, I want you to take note of the interval. 
So first, the first queue, after five seconds, the second queue, and then all have been executed. And you also notice that this guy was frozen. Now, this is for sync. Let's change this to async and run this again. And let's see what happens. So you can see immediately the application went on running and you can see here we have all have been executed then the second queue then the first queue so you can see that it actually ran all of these queues and executed this print statement and after two seconds it executed this guy after five seconds it executed this guy so you can see firsthand the difference between synchronous programming and asynchronous right and I hope this helps put things into perspective. Now if you look over here, you're going to notice that it printed all have been executed when in fact all have not been executed, right? Now, what if you were in a real position where you needed to execute a method or a function whenever all of the queues have executed? So how would you do that? Let's see that now. So what you would do is to create a group and this is equal to dispatch. Why do I have problems spelling this? So dispatch group like that. And then we're going to need to add um, these blocks into that group. And it's simple. Just say group and pass in the group. So we're going to do the same thing for the second block like that and by doing this group is able to keep track of the number of blocks that have been completed right and with that we can actually ask group to notify us whenever the um, executions are completed so what we're gonna do is say group dot notify and here we need to specify the queue that we want our block of code to be executed in you can simply execute it in our main queue, okay? And then all I need to do is copy this print statement and do that inside the block. We could also do something like update our UI. So I'm just gonna say self.view like that and background color. And let's make this, uh, let's say brown. Now let's run this and see what we have. Okay, so if we look over here, you can see that the app is running, the second is completed, but then it only updated the view when the first queue was done. Okay, so it actually executed it. It finished executing this one, which is two seconds, but it didn't execute this notify block, but it waited for this guy to be completed. And then it printed this out, all have been executed, and then updated the background. So you can see that this actually is very helpful whenever you want to execute different uh, different tasks in different queues and then wait for all of them to be completed before performing one more or many more tasks. I hope that makes sense. Cool. Now the last thing I'm going to talk to you about is called um, QoS, quality of service. Now the idea of quality of service is to um, ask the system to prioritize certain queues. So um, let's say you want to create a queue, but you want that queue to be executed faster or just to have more resources available because the tasks or the um, instructions you want it to execute are very important, right? So what you do is to specify a QoS, right? Quality of service. Now, to do that is fairly easy. It's very easy, actually. So what you need to do is, right over here, you could simply just say QoS, like this. And then, if you just put in the dots, you can see the different ones we have. So background, default, unspecified, user initiated, user interactive, um, utility. So basically, if you wanted one that is um, very fast, so the, the one with the highest uh, priority is the user interactive, like this. And you can see here, um, user interactive tasks such as animations, event handling, or updating your app's user interface, right? So you just put in user interactive like that. 
So it's very fast. It's virtually instantaneous. Okay. Now another one we have is uh, the user initiated. So user initiated like this, you can see um, prevents the user from actively using the app. So this one is actually fast, but not as fast as the user interactive. Then next we have the utility, utility like this. And then finally background. This is used pretty much when um, you really don't mind how long the task takes, okay? So it just executes in the background and whenever it's done, it just goes ahead, all right? So some of the things you could even do is to create a queue. So you could just go ahead and uh, you can create a queue called background queue like this. And then this is gonna be equal to dispatch queue and then you're going to pass in a label of, you can call this background queue. And then you now specify a QoS like this of dot background. All right. Now, wherever in your program or your application, you could simply just reference your background queue and then call your async and then execute some code. All right. So print and uh, this is the background like that so somewhere else you could also go to your background queue execute a sync like that so basically it's just gonna uh, keep things organized so you don't have to switch back and forth go into the background go into another queue and you know just get things messed up so this way you just know that this queue is gonna be used for all background tasks okay so um, like I said this topic is actually very broad and I'm just gonna I know I've taken a lot of time, but um, I believe I've actually covered most of the things we need to know about um, concurrency. So uh, if you have any questions, please, by all means, leave them in the comment section. I'll definitely respond. If you enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and turn on notification. I release videos like this every week. Okay, so um, until next week, see you guys.